up everybody my name is dad radish and i am your vegetable father all right we're here with another netrunner replay um this is a set of cards from the new set system gateway um one way of playing uh, with the new system gateway cards is uh, you can get it with just a starter starter pack which is two starter decks um it uh it's a corporation versus the runner and then uh it comes with some cards you can add in it's a booster pack as it were that um kind of uh change up the the basics of the game give give you a few more new things to do it's a fun way to kind of uh get back into it and, and practice some of your basics um so yeah let's uh let's get into the replay here Shoutouts, as always, to Trip Mirror. Uh, you can find Trip Mirror on Bandcamp. Um, that's where the music is from. All right. Let's get into it here. Um, okay. All right. So, um, interesting thing about these decks is that they are. Um, they're basic decks. They just have um, the identities don't have anything, any kind of like special abilities, um, which is something that uh, you can you can add into the game. But it's a it's a nice way to keep everything you know kind of straightforward. You can focus on uh, the cards in your hand and that sort of uh, what you're working with um, for the most part. Um, so I'm playing Corp here. Uh, I I feel like I need a lot of Corp practice. I have um, lost maybe 60 or to 70% of my games as, as a corporation. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's helpful again to, to like be able to practice like the, uh, corp, uh, corp side of things. So that's what I've been doing. So I, let's see what happens here. This is my opening hand and I take a mulligan. So let's just like kind of step through the thinking process here. So, mm, I'll say that right now, my thinking of the game, uh, you know, but the default hand when you're not trying to uh, accomplish like particular shenanigans in your deck is um, two pieces of ice. So these are the cards that you use to protect your servers. Um, something economic, an economic card to kind of like uh, give you credits, get things going. And then a uh, one agenda. You're probably going to get one. Um, uh you know it's nice it in some ways it's nice if you can avoid it in other ways maybe it's a little dangerous because it means that your agenda density i think um somewhere between eight and ten of your cards in a 40 card deck these are only 30 card decks so the agenda density might even be even smaller um no way i take that back it's a 30 card deck if you play it as a in the um the starter format but then you add in 10 cards so it becomes a 40 card deck which is closer to conventional so in a 40 card deck about um eight to ten ten cards or it'll be a, uh, eight to ten cards will be agenda so um it's just something to keep in mind you're probably going to see one so anyway in terms of opening deck mechanics or opening hand mechanics there's no economy in the starting uh starting hand these two cards are ice cards uh these cards are agendas and then here is um an operation which is kind of like an event card i can use it to uh produce a kind of event in the in the game but or an effect on the game but it doesn't this one in particular doesn't um give me money so this is why what i do is i take a mulligan 
and um, a mulligan in, in this game would be you take uh, all the cards that you had, you shuffle them back into your deck. Um, and then you draw five new cards, so you might get those cards again, but you know it'll kind of change up the uh, the pattern a little bit. So tough mulligan, no no ice in this. Um, the reason why you want two is you kind of want to be able to protect R and D and HQ together. It's a nice kind of defensive opening. So, but no ice here, and now I have two agendas in my hand. So, <laughs> so uh, this was kind of an auspicious start here. So runner side, uh, well in the game the corp takes the first mulligan, and then the runner can decide whether or not to take a mulligan. I'm not sure if anybody feels like that actually changes their decision making. Like, if the corp takes a mulligan, your assessment is that their hand was poor, or they, they, you know, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm not really sure about the. There is, there is a mind game there, but I don't really know if it will trigger any change in decision. So, um, let's see here. If uh, oh, so okay, so the um, the runner decided to keep. Um, they have wildcat strike. This is. Um, it is a kind of economy card, so it's pretty inexpensive at two credits, but it gives the corp a choice of what, what's going to happen. So, um, you know, the, the less good thing is the thing that's going to happen for them. Uh, so it's a gain six credits. That's like, you know, solid economy or draw four cards. And that's, um, you know, cards are, are also a resource and a lot of cards can power your credit economy. So, um, so that's kind of a, a key add here. Um, these are two run effects, so Overclock is a way of doing a run with a special property. So Overclock is a really kind of special card. You uh, you do a run and the, this will give you five extra credits that you can use just during that run. It's a, kind of a throwback edit to a very signature classic um, Android Netrunner card called Stimhack, which um, you can look up and, and I can discuss, but it was sort of the, uh, uh, got, got at the feeling of, of uh, what it meant to be to be a runner. Uh, Tread Lightly is uh, is also an extremely kind of dangerous card in this set and and um, uh, something you'll have to play around is the Corp. So um, for this one, it's a it's another run event, so it uh, kind of replaces the basic run action. And uh, uh, you can read the text here, run any server. During that run, the rest cost of each piece of ice is increased by three credits. So um, it makes things, if the Corp feels like their unresed ice suite is, is defensive enough, then it's um it's an illusion <laughs> um when they run with tread lightly suddenly you'll find you can't can't res all the stuff so this is a reason again to keep up try to keep up an economic lead as a corp have more credits than you think you need um you know and then when it gets really down to brass tax count it count it out um, add plus three to all your res costs and they have unity which is a code gate um, icebreaker um, which breaks one of the three kinds of ice all right let's get into it so I get my first mandatory draw as Regolith Mining License, um, and that's great. This is an economic card for me. It sits on the table, and then I can uh, click it to take uh, three credits from it, um, up to the total loaded on it at the beginning, 15 credits. Um, let's see. So uh, I drew a card here. This is a little bit... Uh, that's funny. I should... Uh, <laughs> I need to avoid scrolling it. Um, I, drew a I drew a card here... Um, I think I did that because I expected to play and then uh, and then put down a card. So I knew that um, I could safely draw it. I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to get rid of anything, and then it would um, kind of fill out my the, my plan, give me more things to do. And so what I pulled was the Amaze Amusements, um, which is a really useful upgrade in the set. Um, what it does is upgrades sit in a server, and then they uh, have some kind of effect. Um, uh, and, and in this case, the effect is that when the run on the server ends, um, if the runner stole an agenda, then they get two tags. Um, tags are a kind of resource that, sh that indicates that, that the runner has been identified and um, the corp can take some actions on that, which we're going to see. Um, well, I, I can just sort of preview here, which is that in the set, one of the interesting things you can do if the runner's tagged is you can score this agenda. So to score it, uh, the number in the upper right hand corner is the four, that's the advancement cost. So you need to invest four credits, four clicks um, into this um, to uh, to score it out. Um, and when you do, you get two points uh, towards ending the game. Remember it's a seven, it's a, it's a game to seven. And then there's an effect that happens when you score it. If the runner's tagged, you do four meat damage. So you pull four cards out of their hand. They have to, they have to put them in the heap. They have to put them in their discard pile. Um, 
So four, four meat damage is kind of a lot. If that exceeds the number of cards they have in their hand, then uh, then you win. It's called a flat line. And basically you've uh, you've uh, murdered the runner as the corporation. So um, that is a that is uh, one way to win uh, that game. Uh, let's see. All right. So um, I start with playing uh, predictive planogram, which is an economic card. Is that hold on? Wait, what, did I, what actually did I draw? Oh, yeah, that is what I drew. I had a predictive planogram in my in my opening, which is which is good actually. This is an economic card, so no ice, but I had some some econ. Uh, I guess I could talk about a pr predictive planogram a little bit. This is um, a transaction, um, and uh, I get to choose as a corp what to do: gain three credits or draw three cards. This is pretty nice. It's very it's extremely flexible, and if the runner's tagged, you get to do both. So another example of you know when the runner's tagged, um, the uh, think corp gets a little more flexible, a little more powerful. There's more things to do. All right, so I've gone ahead and played predict planogram. I chose to take three credits. Um, I'm trying to inch my way up to ten, because when I get to ten credits, I can kind of leapfrog and play government subsidy to get to fifteen. All right, and so I put out the regolith mining license. This is um, an economic card, and um, this is a thing that'll happen sometimes. I end my turn, and I kind of just dangle this out there. Um, that is a signal of sorts to the runner I, that I didn't want to protect it. Um, they should probably assume that it's not an agenda. If you're a runner with a little bit of experience, you'll kind of guess that it's a, it's an econ card. And these cards, um, you can see there's a trash icon in the lower right hand corner, um, with a three on it. And what that means is that, um, this card costs, let me, hold on, what's happening here? I'm going to try and fix something. No, I think it's okay, actually. It's okay. Um, this with, a, with the three trash costs, um, if you uh, run and access this card as the runner, you can pay three to, to trash it, make it go to the archives. Um, generally make it so that the uh, corp can't benefit from it anymore. So um, that's part of the, uh, the interplay here. Okay, so what does the runner decide to do? Um... Plays Wildcat Strike first. This is that sort of uh, credit or cards um, uh, thing that uh, uh, event that I uh, talked about earlier. And here I choose cards. Um, the kind of rough thinking here is that, or my rough thinking is that the runner doesn't have many credits um, at three, and so that means that um, they can get a lot of cards and they won't they won't be able to afford them um, at least not right off the bat. Um, and the hand limit, or the default hand limit, is five cards. So I figure they'll probably have to pitch some things at the end of this. Um, all right, so they put down their one of their breakers. It's Unity. Um, that drains them of credits, so they have no more credits. Um, and then they play Creative Commission, uh, which is a card if you play that at the end of your turn as the runner, you gain five. Um, you can play it at, at another point um, in your in your turn. Um, you know, it's a funny thing. Maybe I have to explain clicks better. Okay, let me walk this back. You have a resource, which is clicks, which is basically actions. Um, and, and you can spend these clicks to do a bunch of basic actions. Um, and in this case, playing an event would be you, you pay a click, you pay the one credit, and then this uh, action happens, you gain five. Um, and this has this interesting property where if you have any more clicks remaining, you also lose a click. So, um, it, it, this normally costs one one click, but if you play it any time other than the last click on your turn, it costs two. So that's um, an interesting thing about Creative Commission. It kind of um, leans the runner towards uh, a certain kind of play pattern. All right, so they've gotten back up to five credits. Uh, let's see. Um, and they have to get rid of some cards, as, as mentioned. So they had to get rid of Carmen, which is an icebreaker. That, um, uh, it's a killer, which means that it uh, will, will break sentry ice. Um, and that's only one thing discarded, so all told, they, they made the most out of those uh, cards. So before my turn starts, I uh, res a regolith mining license. There's a window for the corp corporation to be able to do that. Um, let's see what's next here. I get my mandatory draw. What was my... What did I draw into here? Um, ah, let me kind of pull this back a little bit. Okay, this was my mandatory draw, so it was the brand. Um, this is a pretty one of the stronger pieces of ice in, in the set. Um, six to res, six strength, and then it has this interesting property. This um, faction, Haas Bioroid, um, 
their ice is usually has this property where you can um, the runner can lose clicks so they can use clicks in their turn to get past uh, the subroutines um, and then um, the subs in this are really interesting the first one um, if the runner doesn't break it um, allows the corp to install a piece of ice from your hand or from your discard pile right uh, inward from the ice ignoring all costs so you can just sort of start stacking up the server um, if the runner doesn't break the sub and then um, it has two end the runs on it which means that uh, um, if the runner doesn't break it then it stops stops the run there's two which means that the runner will will need to break it twice they need to use an icebreaker to break it twice they need to use two clicks um, if you think about sort of the math of this card the runner can get through it if they use their whole turn to do it right so if you imagine this is one ice on in fact i probably install it here so we can talk about that scenario so this is brand on r d or sorry on hq so that's protecting my hand um, but if the runner has four clicks in their turn and they use the first one to run this run on hq then they can use a click to break the first subroutine click to break the next one click to break the next one and they're in um, so there's a, a limitation that's kind of like a key limitation to this very powerful uh, otherwise like pretty powerful ice all right so I uh, use the regolith mining license here to gain uh, to gain three. So you'll see the numbers are down here are ticking down, and my credits are ticking up. Um, I do the, do it again, um, and that's how I end my turn. Just sort of um, getting money, protecting HQ a little bit. There's two. There's two. Um, what is the right word for? Oh, there's two agendas in here. So need needs to be defended. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, let's take a uh, peek here. Uh, 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 uh. All right, um, what does the runner do? So the runner decides just to, to start running. So they know what this is now, um, and there's nine credits on it. Um, that's that's a lot of money to just leave to the leave to the corpse. So they decide to run it. Uh, they access pay three to trash it. Really complicated there. Next thing they do is run R and D. Um, R and D uh, is uh, is the draw deck, and there's a little bit of a graphical bug here. There, there are cards here, but it's just not it's not showing it. So anyway, um, interesting thing for the corp when the runner accesses a card from R and D. I don't see what it is in a live game of Netrunner. It might look like this. I I take the top card off off of my deck, and I have the back to me, and I'm showing it to the um, to the other player. Um, and if it's an agenda, they'll take it. Um, they can decide to uh, to trash it. There's a funny thing where if it's ice, ice typically has no trash cost, right? So um, if you pick it up and they say put it away or like you can put it down, you know that you kind of get a feeling that it's ice. Uh, if you pick it up and like they have to like squint at it a little bit, you might know that it has a trash cost. It has a little icon in the corner saying uh, what to do with it. Um, I'm sure this is, this is sort of a kitchen table thing. Um, I'm sure in more sophisticated play, you know exactly what the card is as soon as it comes up, because uh, the uh, deck kind of resolve themselves into archetypes for any given meta. All right, let's keep uh, moving through here. So they install Smart Root Distributor Econ card. It costs a click to load it. So um, it when you uh, the runner can spend a click to put three on it, and then that money sort of like come comes out um, one per turn. Um, so that's a way for them to, to keep up with it. And there are two credits, which isn't very many. All right, so I'm trying to get in the position to score something. So I uh, draw and, and apply this piece. Do I, wait, this is all, let me see where, where that happens exactly. So um, the corp has to draw at the beginning of their turn. The corp only gets three clicks, and then they, uh, they get an automatic draw. So I draw a Palisade. Um, which is a good ice to put um, on uh, your remote. And then I draw another card. What did I get here? I got a fun house, which is another piece of ice. Um, this is a good win in the set. Uh, when the runner encounters it, they they have to take a tag. Um, that's um, It's not a subroutine. It doesn't have the little um, uh, return icon on it. So there's no, there, there's no icebreaker interaction. So um, that's pretty valuable. And then uh, give the runner one tag unless they pay for it. So it's a little taxing um, one way or another. Uh, okay, so what I decided to do, I put the Palisade over here. When uh, the size of protecting a remote server gets plus two strength, a remote server is one 
well, let me say that your central servers are archives, R&D and HQ. You can think of those as like the main um, hubs where the corporation, you know, does its business. And then it has remote servers um, where it's it's operating these agendas. So anyway, you want this on a remote server. It gets two strength. It's a four strength ice, which is kind of a key number um, in the set. And it just has one sub and the run. So this is just, you know, kind of this flat, simple. You're just trying to stop them from getting in. Um, and then I put in the Amaze Amusements. So this is an upgrade that um, helps, you know, give me something when the when if the runner steals an agenda, you know, um, it gives me a chance to they get tagged and I get get a shot at some counterplay. All right, runner um, uses BRKation first click uh, to it gains more cards. So where does that uh, put them? Uh, they get another smartware distributor. Um, a sure gamble. This is a classic runner economy card. For five credits, you play it, you gain nine, net four. Um, it'll burst you up a little bit. Jailbreak. Um, let's see. Um, this is an interesting card. Unless you run HQ and R&D and you get to see more than one card or one more card than you usually do. And if it's successful, you also draw a card. Um, so that's nice. It, it replaces itself if the run is successful and it does a thing uh, called multi-access. Accessing more cards is good. Then uh, and then overclock, which is a run event we've seen before. So let's take a look. Um, they install the other smartware distributor, so this can, if they invest a little bit in this, they can give them two credits per turn. And then uh, they play a jailbreak, and so where are they running? They're going to run on R and D. Uh, they're going to get to see two cards off the top. Um, and they didn't get to do anything with those cards. So either there wasn't a trash cost or they decided not to pay for it. Um, uh, yeah, they didn't have a lot of money, so maybe they saw something. So what was one of those cards that they saw? It was hedge fund. Yeah, no trash cost. So, um, so I kind of know what I have to do here. Um, it, it's time with a with the runner not having a lot of money. It's time to to get an agenda out here and try and, and get a score going. So that's what I do. I put in the orbital superiority and then I go advance advance. Um, so there's it would have been another play pattern here, which is I could have done something else. I could have um, done a hedge fund and then installed the orbital superior and advance it once. Um, it still has the same that would have the same pattern, which is the next turn. Um, I could uh, do install, or you could just do advance, advance, advance. It would get to four advancements. Um, I think what I was trying to enable here by advancing it twice, my next turn could be public trail, which tags the runner, and then advance, advance, which um, adds these blue tokens to it, and then I can score it. Um, and if I score it under those conditions, it means this means that the runner would be tagged and then I'd be able to hit them for four meat damage. You know, if they've played some cards out of their hand, that might that could be that could be uh, a win in the game. So I think I was uh, kind of trying to set myself up for that. Um, what does the runner do? The runner plays telework contract. That's a that is a um, economy card. It's a bit like uh, their version of regolith. Um, so when you play it, you load it with resources from the bank and then you can click to take the money off. So um, I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to look at some stuff. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so loads up the Teller contract. Kind of knows that economy needs to be better. They may might be looking for their breakers. Um, with only a Carmen, with this, they can get past code grades. With uh, Carmen, they can get past sentries. They can't get past barriers. Um, and that's what I have out right now is I have this. Um, this is a, a Byroid barrier. This is a, uh, just a, a regular vanilla barrier. Um, okay, so I'm able to get it uh, get it through, but what happens to me here? Aha, I really do want very badly to play Public Trail here, but you can only play it if the runner made a successful run on their last turn, and that didn't happen. So couldn't play it. I have an option to kind of leave this hanging here, but you got to, I don't know. Mm. I think a better player might have left it hanging, might have made the bet that they couldn't get past the Palisade. But me being a little more um, cowardly than that, or you know, just kind of wanting to like play some fair net runner and inch the game forward, um, I just uh, well, actually, what did I do here? Oh, so I played this to gain more money, which is good. You know, just create even more of a buffer, uh, advance, advance, and then uh, score it out. That gives the runner a tag. Or let me explain that a little bit more. Um, 
when you score this agenda, if the runner's tagged, you do meet damage, but if they're not, you give them a tag. So that's useful. Gives a little bit of a uh, drag on their side. Um, let's see. Using Sure Gamble to gain nine uh, installs this other breaker. So they kind of like uh, boost up their credits and now have enough to be able to do this. Um, and then they uh, remove the tag. So that's a runner basic action. Um, you don't need a special card to do that. It's just something you can do. If you're tagged, you can spend a click and two credits to remove the tag. So, um, well, let me just think about what I drew here. So, uh, when I started my turn, I drew the, um, Managarm Skunk Works. It's a, um, this is another defensive upgrade when the runner approaches the server. Um, you can end the run unless they spend click, click or pay five. So this is a really useful way to protect another way to protect an agenda. That's not ice. Um, but when the runner makes a successful um, run or when they when they kind of break through to this, they can uh, pay three to trash this um, upgrade. So un un ice is kind of relatively permanent. Um, it's a special interaction for uh, usually involving a card for the uh, runner to eliminate a piece of ice, whereas upgrades, um, you know, they're, they're kind of temporary, but they do have powerful effects. Um, let's see. So I go ahead and put in the next orbital superiority. I feel like um, it's in my hand. I feel like I can I can I can take care of it. I I'm still betting that with two cards, the runner doesn't have a way to get through this barrier. Um, I see two breakers here, but no barrier breaker. So that's sort of the bet I'm making. Same play pattern. Advance, advance. All right. So whoops. Let's see. Let me back it up a little bit. Uh, runner gets credits. Uh, they draw a card. They draw another card. They're they're probably looking for their barrier breaker here. Um, they get conduit stead, which is a I mean you know, this is a powerful card. Um, when you you can use it to run R and D, and then when you're successful, you get to access extra cards based on how many virus tokens there are, there are on this. Every successful run you make, um, you add a, a virus counter to it. So if you run with this once. Um, Let's see, it'll probably, it doesn't start with any virus counters on it. So you run with it once to hit R&D, you're successful. You look at one card, that's normal. You run with it the second time, um, it has a counter on it. You look at two cards and then you have two counters on it and then you run it again and then you look at three cards. So anyway, you just start to be able to get these increasing chunks out of R&D. Um, it's a powerful effect, um, fun when it gets working and I don't have any ice on R&D, so it's a pretty good install. Um, and as a matter of fact, that's the next thing that happens. So. Um, uh the runner gets in uh grabs a superconducting hub um off the top so that's uh that's conduit work it gets a, a counter on it and the next run on rd is going to uh, hit even harder so um one thing you might need to do as a runner in this format is uh, try to stay above uh eight credits because if you run um it activates public trail um makes it so i can play it the runner made a successful run on the last turn um, give the runner a tag unless they pay eight. So the runner doesn't have eight. Um, so they take a tag here. Um, and then what do I have in here? The orbital superiority. So that would deal for me damage. So advance, advance. Boom. <laughs> the runner's flatlined um, because they only had, where was it? Two cards, I think, or three cards in hand. So I did just enough damage to flatline them. So yeah, that was this game. Uh, this was my first, uh, I think my first flatline win, which is um, kind of funny. Um, uh, well, it's not funny. It's just, you know, the, I think in, in most of when I was playing Netrunner very casually, a flatline win um, uh, required a, a little bit of dedication, a little bit of setup. But here in System Gateway, it's kind of um, kind of tightly um, enabled within like this kind of smaller card, card pool. All right. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I, I enjoyed talking about the replay and um, uh, yeah, just uh, talk to me about Netrunner and you'll see more Netrunner content on the stream. I, I can't get enough of it. Thanks. Take it easy.